Hi, Edison here, and you probably guessed by the title of this video and the fact that this box right there says Beckett grading, that this is a Beckett return. And like right off the bat, I'm still really impressed. Like this is how this stuff is packaged. If you remember my, f oh, sorry, Express CGC submission, uh, like how that was packaged and how disappointed I was, like the, the, the slabs were all just grouped together and thrown in a box with a very thin piece of bubble wrap. Like that's not right. Man, for how much I pay to get the cards graded, it's not right that they treated those cards like that. And I still appreciate that Beckett is, uh, you know, I mean, it's not cheap to grade on this tier, but they're at least putting effort into making sure the cards look good. So, as I said, this was a premium order to Beckett. It got there, I think, pretty much exactly two weeks ago. Like, on, I'm recording this video on a Monday. I think it got to them two weeks ago on that Monday. Um, and then it was done grading the, this previous Friday, so three days ago. So it took like almost two weeks to get it done, like almost 10 business days. So, I mean, that's still pretty fast, but it's not cheap. Uh, it's definitely probably, on, it's probably on par with like CGC Express right now, but CGC Express is also half the cost of Beckett. So uh, this is the cheapest your Beckett offers right now. So, uh... Yeah, this is, let's just go into the cards. I'm excited to get these back. Right off the bat, you can kind of tell what grade you got because this silver label is used for only 8.5s and 9s. So like that's the range they're working in. And I might be in the minority here, but I really like how Beckett cases look. And this was something when I got that, my uh, Full Metal Alchemist submission back, I realized how much I actually like these cases. They, they feel sturdy, they present pretty nice. Uh, the biggest issue would be, like, this card. It's definitely not even in the sleeve. Well, in the slab, like, it's a lot closer to this edge than it is to that edge. But, yeah. So, we know it's in the 8.5 to 9 range. Uh, I guess I, I've already seen the grade, so I do know this is a 9. Let's flip it around. The slab itself says 2007 World Champions Pack, Unlimited Japanese, number 15, Vaporeon Gold Star, Mint 9. It's a beautiful card. Uh, it's a little off-center. So I guess I could talk about these grades as well. Um, I'm not the most confident in Beckett's grading standards. Uh, and the main reason with this one is, if you look right there, there's a chip. This was still the minter copy that I had uh, compared to the two very poor gold stars. But I don't think if I had sent this to CGC, uh, especially CGC, uh, that they would have graded it as uh, forgivingly uh, on edges if there's a chip there. And the fact that it's a little off-center as well uh, makes me think this is probably like an 8.5 at CGC. But regardless, this is a beautiful card. And I've talked about it before in uh, that previous, like, the previous Rarest Gold Stars video that I did. But this is, like, very low population. And uh, I guess I really, to, to prove that, this is the only unlimited uh, Vaporeon Gold Star from World Champions pack that Beckett has graded. I mean, a nine is a phenomenal grade in that type of a card. Here we have the Flareon, because they were sent back to back. I know the grade as well, so... Actually, this one's a lot more centered on the back, too. Uh, centered in the slab. Well, actually, is it? It's like slightly more. 2007 World Champions pack unlimited Japanese Flareon Gold Star. Just really cool. I, I do actually love this Flareon art, and for how expensive Play Flareon is, which I actually didn't even realize Play Flareon had gotten up so much. Uh, I mean, these are still much cheaper alternatives for rare cards. So this uh, Vaporeon was the only one that, uh, this Vaporeon was the only Vaporeon Gold Star Unlimited Beckett's graded, and this Flareon is the only Flareon Gold Star Unlimited they've graded. So these are both uh, Population 1, like pop one, but with no other copies graded. Here we have the label. Um, I think this is the label that if it's eight or lower, you get this one. Here's the back. Very rough condition. Like we know, I know this was a beat up card. Um, like I just knew. But it is a Charizard. So Charizard's probably one of those cards that is you're most willing to get in low grade and. That's something that I'm doing is I definitely want to put together and collect as many Shadowless Chargers as, as I can. The price has kind of come down to a point where I feel pretty safe buying them. Um, 
because we, we've seen where they can go and I just like them. I, I really do like how the Shadowless Star looks. Pick this card up in Japan, 1999 base Shadowless Charizard Hollow Rare in a, a BGS 5.5. Not an impressive grade, but it presents super nice. Like this is a really clean five and a half. Um, and like when I took front scans and showed friends, they were like, they, when people saw the front scans of this card, they assumed there was gonna be a higher grade, like around a seven. Uh, but this back is really where you get knocked. Uh, but yeah, that means still five and a half for this card. It's not cheap, uh, to say the least. Put that to the side. And this is the final card. This is the card that uh, really made the submission so, so worthwhile. And it's probably the most expensive card that I've graded to date. It got the gold label, which we know is given out to, I believe, only 9.5 and 10. I think that's it, like 9.5 and 10. And then obviously if you get a quad 10 with subgrades, it's a black label. This is a beautiful card. You can probably guess what it is, if, since it's an old back card that I'm saying is worth a lot of money, that uh, if you've watched my channel recently, you've seen what I purchased. And I wanna see if you can see it on camera. Uh, I mean, it looks good in the slab. The biggest issue I notice is on the back, there's a little bit of a uh, corner ding right there, a little bit of a nick. The card is super well centered. So here it is, a 1999 Grand Party Campaign Trainer Certification Card, Hollow Promo, Japanese two-star rarity promo in a PGS 9.5 gem mint. Uh, th this is a big card. Uh, I don't have any like sales history on what recent BGS 9.5s have sold for. Uh, I saw a 9 sell for a little over 1100 at PWCC, but I would probably price this pretty close to where the PSA 10s are right now. So yeah, uh, that, that, that's that's an expensive card. And you know, in hindsight, maybe subgrades would have looked nice, but the rest of these cards I sent in, I value these quite highly and I didn't want to get subgrades on them. This might sound like weird, but like I'm impressed with how high these cards graded. And because of that, I am going to be start, I'm going to start submitting the BGS a lot more. If this is like a good test to see like their frame of reference for grading. Uh, and like, that's the same thing with PSA. I would grade a lot more stuff with PSA if I had a better grasp of what PSA would give my cards, but I just haven't submitted too many cards with them in the past. I think I'm barely at 10 cards with PSA. So I don't have a great frame of reference of how their grading standard is. While on the flip side, I'm very critical of the cards I have because I've sent a lot of cards to CGC. I've, I've graded over like 600, 700 cards with CGC at this point. I kind of know how tough they are with cards and how lenient they are on the low end. So I have a lot more room to play around with CGC. So you see me submit to them a lot more consistently because I understand their grading standard and I know how much it costs. It's a lot cheaper. Uh, but this stuff is pretty hit or miss, and, and this stuff is really expensive to grade. So yeah, that, that's it. Happy to get these cards in, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a nice one, guys.